Hello, I hope you are all doing well today and you have your guided student notes printed out ready to fill out on your end. Uh, today we are going to be talking about circles. In particular, we want to know about the radius, the diameter, and the circumference of a circle. Uh, here on my end today, it's a rather rainy day outside, which makes it a really nice day to get some mathematics done indoors. So before we actually start doing any calculations, let's worry about the vocabulary associated with circles. To begin with, let's talk about what a circle is. Technically speaking, a circle is a set of points. So a circle is the set of all points and circles are flat two-dimensional objects so we talk about the set of all points in a plane that are a given distance from a fixed point. I don't know what it is about dogs, but uh, if you leave a dog staked in your backyard long enough, you will have a beautiful, perfect circle in your grass. Right? Dogs are never quite content to bark at other things from anywhere other than the farthest part of their leash. Uh, yeah, anyway. Uh, let's see, a radius. A radius is used two different ways. We can talk about a radius as an object, in which case it is a line segment. And this line segment connects the center of a circle to a point on the circle. When we talk about the radius, we sometimes talk about it as if it is a length, and so sometimes radius is talked about as the distance from the center to a point on the circle. All right, let's scroll up a little bit here. So either way, um, a radius is either talking about the line segment itself or the length of that particular line segment. And since a circle is made by using a fixed distance from that center point, all radii in a circle, so they'll kind of underline this here because it's important, all radii in a circle are the same length. A chord is also a line segment, but it, this is a line segment that connects two points on a circle. The diameter that goes all the way across the circle, it's a chord, but it's a special chord because the diameter goes through the center of the circle. So the diameter is a chord passing through the center. And just like radius, diameter is often used as a length as well. So we can talk about a circle with a radius of 3 inches or a diameter of 6 inches, and we talk about it as a length. Um, this one feels a little circular when we write it, but we just talk about the length of the diameter.
So however long that segment is, is often just called the diameter of the circle. Uh, circumference talks about the perimeter of a circle. It's a special word just for circles. And you already know that perimeter means distance around. So the circumference is the distance around a circle. All right, so let's test this vocabulary out a little bit. Here we have a diagram. And the first thing we'd like to know is, do you see a radius? So we actually have several radii in here. Maybe pause the recording, see if you can name a radius, a chord, and a diameter. I'll give you a start. Um, the center of the circle is A. So if we went from A to D, we would have a radius. And we write that as AD. And since it's a line segment, we put a little bar over the top. All right, so now you find a few more radii, find a chord, find a diameter, and then when you're done, come back to the recording. Okay, so all radii need to use the center. So we have AD, we have AE, and we also have line segment AB. Now a chord just connects two points on a circle. So chords and radii are not the same, but we have one over here from C to B. But there's also another one. Did you find it? Yeah, a diameter is a type of chord. That was in our definition. So perhaps you would put in DE as a chord as well. Certainly D and E, right? The line segment connects two points on the circle. It's just that the diameter happens to pass through the center and other chords do not. So over here, the diameter, we can talk about line segment DE. All right, so let's try a little true-false. If it is a diameter, then it is a chord. What do you think? Well, a diameter, we go back to the definition, says it is a type of chord. So this one would be true. Pause the recording, figure out the other two, and then come back. Let's see what you have. If it is a chord, then it is a radius. This one is false. A radius will always use the center, and a chord uses two points on the circle. If it is a chord, then it is a diameter. That's also false. Letter D was true, but we can't turn it around the other way. So for example, over here, this CB is a chord, but it is not a diameter because it doesn't go through the center of the circle. All right, let's check out the next page here. Working with circles, we have to work with what are called irrational numbers. Irrational numbers got their name because, quite frankly, when they were discovered, they didn't quite make much sense, and that's what the word irrational means. Irrational numbers are really a little difficult to come to grips with because these are numbers whose decimal portion is infinitely long. Well, there's a little more to it than that. So when we talk about being infinitely long, we don't just mean that um, we're saying 5.33333333333 forever and ever and ever. Not only is it infinitely long, but the digits have no pattern to them. Oops, let me fix that there. There we go. Separate the R from the N so it doesn't look like an M. So the decimal portion is infinitely long and contains no pattern. It would be really hard to write down such a number. Right? The digits are infinite. You would never end. And since there's no pattern, you couldn't talk about a repeating portion or describe how to tell what digit comes next. And since you can't write it down, then we give it a symbol. So pi is an example of an irrational number. And the symbol that we give it is this Greek letter here, pi. 
All right, so how do we calculate pi? Well, what happens, what people have known for thousands of years, is that if you take the diameter here of a circle, make a string that long, and then try to wrap it around the circle, it will go around once, twice, three times, and then have a little bit left over. So if you took the circumference of a circle and divided it by the diameter, it would go in three plus a little bit times. And that is exactly what pi is. We take the circumference, of a circle and we divide it by its diameter. It doesn't matter how large the circle is, the diameter wraps around the circumference three and a little bit times. This is a fixed number, it works for every single circle and that makes it really interesting and well frankly rather amazing. So as a formula, pi is equal to the circumference, right, we use a capital C for that, divided by the diameter. Some people have probably already memorized uh, pi as 3.14, and the first thing we want to do is really point out that pi and 3.14 are not the same. If pi was 3.14, we wouldn't have to give it a symbol to represent it. We'd just write down 3.14 all the time. This 3.14 is an approximation. That's why we have those little squigglies over there. Uh, some other people may have heard of the approximation as 22 sevenths, for pi. And um, both of these are really nice approximations, very handy, but for us, so that we avoid round off error, we are going to focus on using the pi key on your calculator. So hopefully you have the TI-30 calculator, which was recommended for this course. Uh, get it out and let's take a peek at it. So here it is, at least the front face of it, and the pi key is right here. So it's a little bit up and left of the 7, it's the fourth button down on the left hand side. So this is the button we want to use whenever we are working with pi. If we put in 3.14, we're using a rounded value, we're introducing error into our calculations before we even get started. Okay, so let's get back to our notes. There are a few formulas associated with circles. Some of them are fairly obvious and some of them are not. The obvious ones we can see immediately right from the picture. So for example, it's easy to tell that the diameter is twice as long as the radius. Or if you wanted to go the other way, we could say that the radius is half the size of the diameter. We already know that pi was figured out by taking the circumference of a circle and dividing it by its diameter. And if we use this equation and multiply both sides of it by d, then on the right hand side the d's would cancel and the circumference would be left all by itself. And on the left hand side we would have pi times a diameter. So we tend to use this one quite a bit. The circumference is pi times the diameter. And then of course people flip pretty easily back and forth between these two because they've got a good picture in their heads. So let's try an example here. We have example number two. The radius of a circle is 4.3 centimeters long. We would like to know the circumference and diameter of the circle. And since pi is something that has an infinitely long decimal portion, we're going to need to round our answers. And so this time, we will round to the nearest thousandth. Let's see what we have. Um, well, we have a radius. So we know that the diameter is equal to twice the radius. The diameter is something we don't know, but we can certainly take 2 times 4.3 and use our calculator to figure it out. So this diameter is equal to 8.6. And of course, we need some units in there. Whoops, hold on a second. Let me fix that. There we go. 8.6. Our units are here, centimeters. All right, how about the circumference? Circumference is calculated by taking pi and multiplying by the diameter. So this circumference is pi 
multiplied by 8.6. We know that pi is a little bit more than 3, so if we multiply 8.6 by something a little bit more than 3, we should be expecting something around 027-ish, oh, maybe about in the area of 3 times 9. So with your calculator, use the pi key, not the 3.14. So this circumference, when we get done with our calculator, uh, calculator display says, what, 27.017696682 dot 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 goes on and on and on forever, and even the calculator has to round eventually. Our job here is to round to the nearest thousandth. So like we did before, we're going to find the thousandths place and then look one space to the right and decide if that underlying digit needs to bump up by one or stay the same. Since the six is larger than a five, the underlying digit is going to bump up by one. So this circumference is approximately, because we are rounding, 27.018 and circumference is a length, so these are centimeters. All right, let's try the second example. Here we have a diameter of a circle that is 12 inches long. Our job is to find the circumference and the radius. So what I'm going to ask you to do is to uh, pause the recording here, give this one a try on your own, see how it comes out, and then come back to the recording when you are done, and we'll check it over. Okay, let's see how things worked for you. Um, we had the diameter being 12 inches long. One of the things we needed to find was the radius. So we know that the radius is half of the diameter. So this time the radius is 12. And of course we will divide that by 2 and come up with 6. So this radius is 6. 6 what? Come back up to check out our units and we see that we need 6 inches. All of these lengths are measured in inches. The next thing we need is the circumference of the circle. So we'll come back to our formula that circumference is pi multiplied by a diameter. Pi, of course, we'll use the button on our calculator. And for the diameter, we will use 12. We expect this circumference to be right around the 36 range because pi is kind of close to 3. And when our calculator is done calculating, it shows us uh, 37.699111184 and a bunch of more digits like that. Okay, they ask us to round to the nearest hundredth. So we'll find the hundredths place, which is here. And then we look to the right. and decide if we should bump the one thing in the hundreds place up by one or not. Uh, since we look to the right and we see another nine, we're going to turn the 69 into a 70. So the circumference is approximately, because we are rounding, 37.70, and of course these are inches. Right? If it asks us to round to the nearest hundredth, we need to have something in the hundredths place when we're done, so leave that zero there. We'll talk more about that issue when we get to a lesson on accuracy and precision. But for now, if it asks you to use the nearest hundredth, make sure you have something in the hundredths place, even if it's just a zero. All right, so let's see. Our last example, let's work this one together because this one's got a little bit to it. The circumference of a circular duct is 120.6 centimeters we would like to know the radius of the duct, and we'll round the radius to the nearest, nearest tenth of a centimeter. So here we go, we have the circumference is 120.6. Always a good idea to write your formula out before you start replacing values. Right? Circumference is pi times a diameter, so this circumference is equal to, whoops, sorry about that, Hang on, that circumference is already known. We're going to fill it in with 120.6. And 120.6 is equal to pi, which is on our calculator, multiplied by the diameter. And it's the diameter that we don't know. So we need to get this diameter all by itself. So if we divide 
the right hand side by pi, we should divide the left hand side by pi. And just as before, pi divided by pi gives us 1. And that leaves d all by itself on the right hand side. On the left hand side, you are going to get a really long decimal again on your calculator. I'm going to write it down here just so that we have it in our notes, but what I want you to do is just keep it on your calculator and then we're going to use that again in just a second. So the calculator says something like um, 38.38817 stuff. Right? So we don't want to write that down because if we write it down, we're going to leave off many of those decimal points. You're or decimal places. Your calculator has them all stored in its memory. We don't want the diameter. Our job is to find the radius. And the radius is equal to the diameter divided by 2. So what you need to do with your calculator is just push divided by and then 2. And it will use the previous answer with all of its decimal places. And then we can round the final result. So on your calculator, you should see 19.194086, bunch of stuff. Right. Our job here is to round to the nearest tenth of a centimeter. So the tenths place is the first place after the decimal. And of course, we will look to the right to decide whether or not the tenths place should be increased by one or stay the same. When we look to the right, we see a 9, which of course is larger than 5, so the tenths place needs to increase by 1, and we say we have 19.2, and the units here are centimeters. Okay, so good luck with your homework, and we'll be talking to you soon. Have a great day. Bye-bye.